Well, 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 what is up, my friends? It is the elusive Mr. Gallows, of course. Of course. Who else would it be? Well, I suppose it could be anyone else, given how long I've been gone, but I assure you guys, it's not an imposter. It is me. As far as I know. So, my friends, this day is a very, very special day. It is the 40th anniversary of the Dark Crystal. That's right, 40 years ago today, Jim Henson released his masterpiece to the world, and it has truly stood the test of time as being one of the greatest fantasy stories ever told. But, you know, strangely enough, with everything that I've reviewed and discussed on this channel, I've never reviewed the Dark Crystal itself. So, I thought, hey, what a better time than right now. It was all planned, obviously. Part of my genius. Now, to most of you who are long-time viewers of this channel, you will have heard this story a couple times before, but, you know, my personal experience with The Dark Crystal was just actually renting it at the movie store. That was my very first experience with it. Back in the day, we used to have movie stores, VHS stores, where you could rent movies. And, you know, I would be in there every weekend, you know, Star Wars films, Don Bluth films, Disney films, you know, and The Dark Crystal was just the next film to watch in my lineup of continuing to experience fantasy movies, but it would impact me just as deeply as Star Wars did. Because even at that young age, I think I was like 10 or 11 maybe at the time, but even at that young age, I could tell how different the film was. You know, this was something special. This was something very unique. The tone, the feel, the darkness, man, I knew it was great. And, you know, I don't ever remember being put off by the idea of puppets either. You know, I grew up with Sesame Street. I grew up watching puppets and Muppets. I grew up with Jim Henson, right? So when I... I uh, saw that this movie was being done entirely with puppets, but they were just much scarier and darker and evil, and there was more of a sinister tone, but also more of a beautiful and magical tone to it, where I was watching a fantasy story. I wasn't really watching a kid's show. It was a full-on fantasy story, but done with puppets. I mean, I was really intrigued by, by that idea. You know, it got me really excited. Now, of course, The Dark Crystal is obviously much darker than Sesame Street, you know, but that's what I loved about it, right? After the happy and cheery Sesame Street, the kids' programming, the kids' learning program, right, of Sesame Street, suddenly being cast into this world of The Dark Crystal is very shocking and very terrifying in a lot of ways. But that's what made it so cool to me, right? That's why I thought it was so cool. It's like seeing Darth Vader for the first time, right? It's like terrifying, yes, but also super rad. And overall, that is my absolute favorite aspect of The Dark Crystal, right? The darkness that it brings. Because when you compare it to a lot of today's kids programming, where it's all like unicorn piss and rainbows, right? People like Jim Henson and uh, Hayao Miyazaki and Don Bluth, right? They were trying to impact kids in a specific way that was scary. But again, that's what was appropriate about it, right? It was scary, it was difficult to deal with, it was sad, it was depressing, it was kind of shocking, right? It was, it, it produces these feelings in you that kids don't normally have. And the effect that it has on you is that it matures you much faster and it grows and expands your imagination. At least, you know, that was my personal experience with it. And that is exactly what The Dark Crystal is all about. Vivid imagination, meaningful characters, epic storylines, Lord of the Rings style world building, right? I am just so, you know, immensely happy that Jim Henson decided to bring this to life and that he decided to put so much passion and love into this project because he knew it was great. You know, Jim was a true visionary and he knows you know, the proper way, I guess, um, I guess the best way to put it would be like, you know, he knows the proper way to imagine. He knows the proper way to execute and direct and craft stories, right? And The Dark Crystal is a perfect, shining example of that. And this is perfectly displayed by my all-time favorite Dark Crystal character in the entire universe. My all-time favorite character, Crystal Bat. Number 333. But other than him, of course, um, I would definitely have to say that 
Agra is my all-time favorite character in the series. You know, I always tend to gravitate towards, you know, those older, wiser characters. Again, like Yoda in Star Wars, right? Because I'm always so captivated and fascinated with the wisdom that they have to teach. And Agra, I mean, Agra is just the best teacher in the entire world. She's so eccentric and wild and free, and she's such a, a free spirit, but she is so sharp and knowledgeable about the universe, so much so that she can guide our heroes all the way through their quests. And that's the thing, you know, of course, Jen and Kira are the heroes of the Dark Crystal, but they wouldn't be anywhere without Agra, right? They wouldn't be anywhere without their great teachers and their great masters lighting and guiding their paths. And Agra, I mean, I know what a fantastic character. Another one of my favorite aspects of the Dark Crystal itself would have to be the practical effects. And yes, I know, you know, obviously it's the 80s. What else are you going to use but practical effects? But my point is that, you know, when I was watching it again, I was really marveling at the fact that everything you see is real. All the sets you see are real. Everything is either a real set, a real practical set, or like matte paintings. And it is just stunning to me that that level of beauty was uh, able to be captured way back in 1982, way before special effects and green screen and blue screen and all these you know computer graphics and all these um, you know kind of uh, new modern age techniques that we use. Even though I think Jim would have enjoyed using those techniques if they were available, but you know without all of those special computer effects, they were able to capture that level of beauty. And it makes it feel so organic and so real. And so what that does is it, make, it makes the universe itself feel very organic and very real. It makes the Gelfling feel like real characters. It makes the Skeksis feel like real characters. The Mystics, they're real people. They're real creatures. And you're just kind of watching what's going on in their lives. And I love that organic feel. There's something to be said about practical effects. That's why a lot of modern sci-fi and fantasy movies are starting to return to practical effects because when the eye can tell that it's not there, right, that's when, when the disconnect starts, and that's a strong disconnect. And it's something that the Dark Crystal does not have, and I'm very, very thankful for that. And, you know, all of that is perfectly encapsulated in my personal favorite scene in the entire film, and I probably share this uh, notion with uh, a lot of you out there, and that is the ending of the film, the entire ending sequence, when the Erskeks finally return, and what a grand ending it was, so epic, so emotional, so dramatic, you know, as the two become one, and the music is providing so much magic, what an amazing epic soundtrack, providing so much magic as the two finally merge and become one again. And then we get one of the most influential lines ever spoken, really, as the Erskeks tell Jen to hold Kira close to him, because she is a part of him, just as we are all a part of each other. One of the most profound, meaningful, and impactful statements ever spoken in fantasy movie history. And it just leaves you with such a feeling of... Uh, I mean, it's almost indescribable, right? But that's the magic, that indescribable kind of just fantastical feeling that it leaves you with, man. That's the Jim Henson magic. Because listen to the beautiful lessons that it's trying to teach us, right? The beautiful wisdom that it's trying to convey to us. And again, this is touched on in dialogue uh, after that scene, right? Which is that courage and sacrifice are what make you whole and that we should build our own world in the light of our Earth's crystal, right? I mean, it's just so beautiful and so profound and so meaningful in so many ways, and, you know... <sighs> Jim Henson was the man, wasn't he? Well, my friends, that's going to do it for my review of the greatest story ever told, The Dark Crystal. But now comes the most meaningful part of this video right here, where I turn it over to all of you to tell me your favorite part of The Dark Crystal. You know, now's your time to list your favorite scene, your favorite character, your favorite moment, why you love The Dark Crystal so much, and of course, most importantly, how you are celebrating the 40th anniversary of The Dark Crystal. Tell me, you know, what are you guys doing? What do you guys got planned? How are you celebrating? How are you doing this thing? You know, I want to hear from you guys. I know for me personally, you know, 
I mean, I'm just going to be marathoning the Dark Crystal and Age of Resistance all day. I'm going to have my little, you know, vial of essence next to me, my little hop figurines, my little Skekron Ergo figurines next to me, and I'm just going to be chilling in my chair, lounging with all the Dark Crystal content that I could possibly manage to watch. Except, of course, for my own personal videos. That's up to you guys. I was there while it was being made. I don't want to watch my own videos, but you guys should go ahead and uh, you know skim through all your perfect videos, uh, all of your uh, most favorite videos, I should say, um, and you know uh, just relive your favorite moments from the Dark Crystal in any way, shape, or form that you can. That's the most perfect way to celebrate. And of course, stay stay strong and stay passionate, guys. And uh, yeah, in the immortal words of Johnny Silverhand. Never stop fighting. Fourth raw, my good dream fasters. I'll see you guys back here for the next video very soon. Fourth raw for Jim. Woo!